What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Whatnots Reactor Core. This is episode 12. Uh, we, hey, we, we, I, I don't think I realized we made it past double digits. <laughs> But we, we are there. We are past double digits. My name is Kyle Springer. I am joined by two lovely ladies this evening. Uh, I am here with Melissa Wilkinson, as well yes. as Jess Beaver. Thanks for saying it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know how, but just thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the, the big thing, like, when, when you first came on with us a while back for the whatnots. It's, it's been a while since you've been on a, a podcast, mm -hmm. but I was like... I feel like her last name is Beaver, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and absolutely, and yeah. I'm, I'm sure you get the wrong one all the time, or, or just that like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it mm -hmm. hesitantly. <laughs> People say Bever a lot, and I just don't understand. It, to me, looks like Beaver, and maybe that's because it's been my last name my whole life. Uh -huh. But, like, I just don't understand how they get it wrong, and I'm just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to say. I'll know it's me. Exactly. Mm. Uh, Melissa, how are you? Yes. I'm good. How are you guys? How's everyone's nights? My night Great. is going well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we are here to talk about Toy Story 4. I'm, I'm excited to, to talk about this one. Uh, I think we, on the last episode of the Reactor Core, which was our Good Omens episode, <laughs> I believe. Yep. That wild thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was a bit of an experiment because I hadn't seen that, and Melissa recapped the the whole thing, tr trying to get me to understand it and and <laughs> and 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 just yeah, just explain it to me, and that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but we thought our next one was gonna be Spider Man, and we totally forgot about Toy Story. Yes. And 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 so I, I remembered, and I was like, guys, we need to do something for to Toy Story. That you know, this is going to be p perfect. So here we mm -hmm. are talking about Toy Story, uh, Toy Story Four. I don't know about you guys, but I I wasn't expecting this film. I I like they they had such a good e e ending with Toy Story Three that when they announced this, I was like. I don't know, guys. I really I was also a little puzzled by it until I heard, well, it's about Woody going to find Bo Peep again. And I'm like, there you go. Now you've got me. That is like the one dangling th plot thread that is definitely worth going back to resolve and putting a bow at the end of everything. A Bo Peep at the end? Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys want to hear a fun story about the Toy Story franchise? Yes. Yes. A short one the first toy story came out the year i was born wow. um so it's weird to me that they did a fourth one it's i'm like wow this is still going like i remember watching this as a little kid um and i didn't realize it was that old i was like i feel like i remember watching that in theaters but probably toy story 2 or something mm -hmm. but i just thought yeah it came out in 1995 which is yeah. 23 years ago guys and yep. we i think that's why maybe got the last one yeah, I was I was five. Kyle, I believe you also I would have been also five. five. Fun fact uh, for any potential Redskin fans out there, if you're a big football fan, uh, I grew up in Northern Virginia, so a lot of the Washington Redskins lived around in the same area. I happened to go see this this film with my dad in the theaters and in in front of us uh, was Ken Harvey and his uh, son. He was a he was a big football player oh. back in the day, and so we got to watch the movie with them. Wow, <laughs> yeah. famous! Yeah, there you there you go. Did they like it? <laughs> I did believe so. Yes. Okay. We, we, we did because I I remember <laughs> we also ran into him and his. I, I I don't remember if he had one kid or multiple kids. Uh, but we ran into them again at the grocery store like a month or two afterwards. And we're like, we saw you at Toy Story. How did you like it? What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, we remember you guys. Because my, my dad is a big Redskin fan. So he's like, 
that's Ken Harvey. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you hear him? <laughs> he probably appreciated somebody talking to him about relatively normal things yeah. instead of like more <laughs> yeah. football. I feel like I would. I'd be like, please, for the love of all that is holy, don't ask me another question about football. Exactly. But it. this has been a film franchise that kind of grew, grew up with me because when Toy Story yeah. 3 came out, uh, and that whole story is basically about moving on and Andy basically mm-hmm. gives up his toys because he's going off to college. I was in college. Yep. And, and so I was just like, oh, man, I know what this feels like. I I know what Andy feels like. I know what the I, toys feel like. <laughs> I think Toy Story 3 is the most I've ever cried in public. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's probably the same for a lot of people. <laughs> We'll get into some of that in in just a sec. But general thoughts: What did you guys think of Toy Story Four? Did 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 you like it? Did you not like it? Where does it fall? I liked it a lot. I this was a very satisfying end to everything. Even I, I would presume it was end with a period and not end with a question mark. Because sure. I think they're done. Maybe a short or two, but I very much doubt we're ever going to get another feature film out of this in our immediate lifetimes. Very good closer to the whole thing. I was pleased. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I think there's already some Disney Plus shorts lined up. I think there's one called uh, like Ask Forky or Forky Asks. Oh, yes. Forky Asks a Question is what it's called. I think there's a Bo Peep one ah plan to it could be wrong yeah i liked it a lot and i have to agree i i think it felt like a good ending Mm -hmm. knowing disney we yeah movies total um Mm -hmm. that's not a normal thing and so i really hope they leave it where they did um and also i definitely like cried full on not just like teary-eyed but like i was sniffling and cody was looking at me and i with glasses it's really hard to just casually Mm -hmm. be like let me just wipe my eye you have to like take them off and wipe your eye and so it's just like don't look at me just let me cry (laughs) i was crying a lot i went to this movie with my mom and my mom is sitting there just eating popcorn real chipper chuckling and like she keeps looking over at me and i'm like don't make fun of me mom this is my (laughs) childhood it's not yours that's Uh, funny yeah um yeah i i i really liked this film i had a great time i did not cry uh Uh, which are you human i which (laughs) was disappointing for me um, I, 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 I definitely cried at the third one and I thought that one was super emotional. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was expecting that going in. Um, and I, 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 it, it just, it didn't have the same emotional weight for me. However, mm-hmm. However there is a scene at the end that almost got me. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, not, not as emotional as I was expecting, but I I, I still really liked it. I think Toy Story 3 is still the boldest of all of these films. Like it takes the biggest risks. It's real high risk, high reward. And this is a little bit more even toned. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to punch you in the gut. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I I think I would agree with that. Though I I I think just the 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 risk of this fourth film was mm-hmm. a big enough risk of like you kind of already ended the franchise. Mm-hmm. What do you what are you gonna do exactly with the this one? But I think it worked out really well. So that that was a good thing. I do have to say, hey though, overall, as much as I liked it, I don't think it was necessary. No, I think we could have, all of us as a society, lived perfectly fine without ever having to see this. But I do like that they have enough respect for, and I don't think it's too much to say, this is primarily Woody's story. This is less of an, uh, like the first two, the first movie is very much a a two-hander. It's a buddy story. Two and three are more ensemble pictures. This is very much Woody's story. And I do like that they were 
had enough regard and respect for him that they're like, something is missing for Woody. Not from the entire franchise necessarily, but from him. And he's going to go out there and get it. Exactly. I think that's one of the, like, few, few almost bad things I have to say about the film. Like, I, I, I really don't have... Mm -hmm. a solid bad thing to say about the film i i think this is top-notch pixar top-notch D -D disney they knocked it out of the park this so. mm -hmm. good stuff do you guys have any other general thoughts you want to share before we move on to our spoiler filled recap uh, and I, discussion stuff i just want to say real quick i was very surprised this movie didn't have a short that played in front of it Oh, yeah. I don't I remember it. the last Pixar movie I saw that didn't come with a short. That's weird. I, I didn't realize that un until now. Me neither. Yeah, I went in, like, looking forward to it. They're always fun. Wow. I it, wonder it, where ooh. it went. It did have I hope some, that's not a trend. It did have some mid and after credits scenes. Um, but not that, like short that like yeah, somebody not... else maybe not in the production team from elsewhere in pixar made a little short about something entirely different yeah and it maybe tests out like a huh. new piece of technology or something like that like how well can we I... render this element i wonder if they're saving them for disney plus now mm. just being like huh. hey we'll just really in instead of releasing them at the start of these movies we'll just release them on disney plus Mm. Huh. Sort of hate that. I like the tradition of it too. Yeah, that, that yeah, was, that I was like such a good thing. Before the movies, and I also have some feelings about the monopoly that Disney is at the moment. Oh, yeah, and will probably forever be. And so I'm just like, what? Disney does things, and my doorbell just rang. Who the hell is at my door? <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, people, if they know me, they don't ring my doorbell. So glad I'm busy right now. Um. <laughs> But, crap, I'm so sorry, guys, my doorbell rang and it threw off everything. No, I just, I think Disney is just going too far, I think. And so I don't fully understand. I'm like, why Disney Plus? Like, why all these things? Yeah. I get more movies, but some of the things I'm just like, why? We'll see. We'll see what happens down the road. Uh, but let's get into our spoiler-filled recap and discussion of the film. Helm. Uh, so right now, if you haven't seen the film, uh, we will be doing spoilers. Uh, I guess I should also say that we are typically not a necessarily family-friendly uh, <laughs> podcast. I think we've managed to keep it clean thus far. Uh, I will try and tone it down, but I, I, I give no guarantee on language and stuff. I know this is generally a more family style film but this p podcast might not be so here we are in spoilers oh my goodness the spoiler thing i just did didn't work oh my goodness i'll have to no. put the sound in um uh, in post production oh well here we are though let's get down to business um uh, sorry Oops, just hit, hit my mic. Uh, so I, I I have a bunch of bullet points uh, for the recap. You guys can butt in any time. You don't have to let me do all of the stuff. Uh, and we can use this as a jumping off point to be like, you know what, I really liked that scene. Let's talk about this thing. Let's do that. Uh, so the movie opens uh, with a flashback nine years ago and we see rc being pulled into a storm drain as bo peep and her sheep billy goat and guruff are being sent off to a new home it starts off real dark um i i, I was not expecting that i was expecting a bit more of a happy start to to the film but it, 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 it was oh my goodness they're they're starting off with something dark right away mm -hmm. uh but then we we do shortly after um sh shortly after bo peep uh gets taken away we do have a bit of a montage uh we get a very very brief summary of the first three films 
so we get to see Andy with the toys, uh, and then Andy giving them to B -B 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 Bonnie, and Bonnie starting to play with those toys uh, as the opening credits roll and all of that stuff. Uh, and then we see Woody in Bonnie's house, and he is struggling to give up his top dog position. He's 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 there in the closet. He still thinks he's running things, but he's not. There's that like Raggedy Ann. Oh, Dolly! Doll. I think her name is just Dolly. Dolly. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Um, yeah. I think though that he really tries. He's just really bad at it. He, he like, and it seems yeah. to forget that he's and not. He's not He's not the Woody of the first movie where right. he's kind of got uh, a bit of an ego about it. He's more like, okay, but like just just making sure that everybody's got anything. Like he's very, very eager to help. He wants to help. He's yeah. very, like it's coming from a very good place instead of like, I'm in charge around here. Yeah, or 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 like he doesn't even seem, he does not seem frustrated. At mm -hmm. them, like, oh, like, how come I can't be the the top dog mm -hmm. here or anything like that? You just like, okay, I'm here, here to help. You guys got everything you need. You guys need mm -hmm. snacks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Make pizza rolls. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we see Bonnie come in, and he's like, "Oh, there's the sheriff," and he and she picks up Jesse, and mm -hmm. she. Picks up the sheriff badge off of Woody and puts it on her, and then closes the door. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where Woody is lifeless, and he like he's not moving. You can just see his shoulders drop, mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh man, he he he, he feels so defeated. He mm -hmm. like he is he is like he's like. That is the moment where he's really starting to feel it. Mm -hmm. I love how he handles it later, though. He handles it with a certain sort of like grace when yeah. they're all done playing. And Jesse's like, oh, here's your badge back. He's like, oh, thanks. Like, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. I half expected like because I went into this movie. We were like, OK, he goes to get Bo Peep back. But like, I don't really know a whole lot more than that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like. I expected some sort of dirty look or more like conflict around that. And he was just like, oh, thanks. And like puts it back on. And I think even like lets it get taken from him again later. Like he's he's just like, whatever I works. So. And I, yeah. it's, it's quite graceful, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's not about him losing the spot as the leader. It's just about him being slowly phased out of the entire community. I also really loved that like it was a girl as the sheriff. I was like, yes, I yeah. like this little girl. I love <laughs> this. Love it. There's a new it sheriff makes, in town. Yeah, and it makes sense. Like Woody's been the sheriff the whole time. They're the they're practically the same doll. Why can't Jesse give it a try? She also fits on Bullseye. It's her turn. Exactly. Um. So the main kind of crux of the story starts when we learn that it is about to be Bonnie's first day at kindergarten. Uh, she has to kind of go through in orientation first to uh to just you know just get 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 used to it and and see see how she likes it and if she'll be a good fit um and she's scared she's mm -hmm. she, she's not sure what to do it's probably one of the first times where she is going to be away from her parents for a, an extended amount of time and so she wants to take a toy with her to help her th 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 throughout the day but her parents say no uh, and Woody sees all of this and he's like, actually, yeah, she does need someone to be there. So he sneaks into her backpack uh, and he, he ends up making his way to kindergarten orientation. Uh, and while he is there, he's he's kind of looking out for B -B Bonnie. Uh, B -B -B Bonnie gets all her art supplies basically taken away from some kid other kid. Worst. Yeah. He, he wasn't he even being it, mean about it though it he was just like yeah he he was just doing his own thing but it, it just like, it sucked for bonnie it was just like it's, uh, I, uh, yeah, I it's a kid like, who doesn't understand sharing yet He's yeah like, this is mine yeah and i know that they're like little but i wanted to like take that kid by the shoulders and be like look Mm -hmm. she doesn't have anything at least ask her over like leave her i, I just wanted to like be like kid yeah. 
<laughs> I, I felt for she's so cute in this movie like her the animation is leaps and bounds from Amazing. what it was in the first one. like yeah. her little cheeks are so round yeah. and her little eyes are so big and i was like oh my god i love this animated child she's adorable and i mm-hmm. will fight people for her she is great uh so this is when woody kind of sneaks out of the backpack <laughs> Uh, and he he starts helping Bonnie. He picks up some of the art supplies out of the trash, uh, and he sneaks them onto the desk that Bonnie is at when she's not looking. Uh, and she starts making stuff, and she makes Orky, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is just this like plastic spork with uh, like a like a a broken popsicle stick for feet that are mm-hmm. a- attached with this like silly putty like play-doh like mm-hmm. su- substance and a pipe cleaner for arms and it has little googly eyes and mm-hmm. stuff like that oh, it just it's match. it is the yeah it is like the most quickly put together like just makeshift ugly toy mm-hmm. <laughs> but bonnie loves it like she she made this thing and this is the toy to help her through preschool. Um and so she's super excited about Forky, uh, and she gets done with the orientation and she runs over to her p- parents going, I finished kindergarten. We're all done. <laughs> it's great. All done. Yeah. And they're just like, Oh no, sweetie. <laughs> like, no. That was just the I... orientation love her parents in this movie yes Uh, i feel like they're amazing and i feel like they're constantly just a tiny bit exasperated Mm -hmm. but they don't take it out on her like their faces when she's like i finished kindergarten they're like she's running and they're like yeah she's like i finished kindergarten they're like Oh, no. We're going to have to so tell her like, some bad be, news. <laughs> you can see in their face, they're like, this is going to be so hard. This is going to be such a hard year. But they love her so much, and they're they're great. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and that quickly gets swept under the rug when they say, hey, we are going on a road trip, basically. But before they go on the road trip, we, uh, we see Woody back at the house. He's now back with... Bonnie's toys uh, and they're all wanting to know how the first day went and Mm -hmm. Woody is happy to announce that Bonnie made a friend everyone's like oh yay great and he goes no 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 Bonnie made a friend (laughs) you know like Frankenstein yeah and so he's like (laughs) introducing Forky and Forky climbs out of the bag and he's just he's like he just he doesn't know what to do and the only thing he knows how to do is run for the tr- trash can. <laughs> he he is trash. He was born from trash. He will yep. die in trash. <laughs> yeah, that that's ex- ex- exactly what he is and that's what he th- that's all he thinks he is. He goes, "I'm trash." And and he, that that's what he wants to run back to. So what he kind of has to keep an eye out on him so he doesn't uh you know go jump in this trash can and he goes no 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 you're supposed to be with bonnie there um and so eventually they go on a road trip bonnie takes a bunch of her toys with her including forky because that's her her new right hand Mm -hmm. toy that's her, her her main squeeze um and along the way forky decides to jump out the window because again, he is trash. <laughs> Big thing in this movie, jumping out the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it happens um, like five times at least. And so Woody is terrified and he's like, well, I have to go after Forky. So he too jumps out the window. Yep. Um, and and b- b- before he j- jumps out, he, he, he asks them like how many miles until the next stop. And they're, they're like 15 miles. And he goes, all right sweet i got it i'll just walk there after which, i get him back i will i will meet is, you there Trust a tiny me. little toy footsteps like how long does it take him to get places his stride is probably forever. like that much yeah it would take forever like, that's like a day and a half journey at least i don't think toys actually no it showed them actually resting mm. toy story always for I me evokes like a lot of questions about their consciousness and like how they work and everything which th- this gets a little bit into that in a sec. We'll g- get there. Mm-hmm. But in this moment in particular, I, 
it just amazed me because in that first Toy Story movie, it was such like, oh my God, we're going outside of Andy's room to the driveway. <laughs> you, you know, like, what yeah. is this big giant world we don't know about called the driveway? The side of the country. Yeah, yeah he's and, like, I'm just going to jump out this RV and walk 15 miles. 15 feet. miles? No big deal. No big deal. We got that. Yeah. It just, like, <laughs> Great, I'll hit my Fitbit steps. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> like, that. that's just to see the scope. It's like, good, good for you guys. You, you guys can mm-hmm. go on some adventures now. Um, so, yeah, Woody, he goes to find Forky, he finds him, and they start uh, walking back, or I guess Woody is dragging him back <laughs> at, 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 at the start. And along the way, he has to basically convince Forky to come back with, with them. And he's, he's having this existential crisis, being like, hey, I am trash. I belong in the trash can. Mm-hmm. can trash makes me feel like i belong it makes me feel warm and cozy yeah. and that is exactly when woody it's like yes that is exactly how bonnie feels with you and that is why she needs you she feels warm she feels safe she feels comfortable because of you and it's like this light bulb eureka mm-hmm. moment for forky and it's 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 almost like this realization of of purpose yes. which i think is one of the the big themes of this mm-hmm. film it's like what what is my purpose now what is a toy's purpose um but yeah so they eventually catch back up to the truck stop or i i guess the, the that next t- town uh where the the rv is supposed to be uh and right before they go to the p- parking lot with the rv is to be they they pass an antique shop and in this antique shop woody notices this sparkling light and so he looks up and he sees bo peep's lamp Mm -hmm. and he gets this this thing where he's like wait that's that's her lamp i i wonder i wonder if bo peep is in there and so he he he's like all right we have to take a detour and they yep, this... jump into the <laughs> antique shop <laughs> this overrides all of his other needs he's Which, like i know I... bonnie is just there we can practically see the rv this will just take a second and my soul needs this yeah yeah which can I raise a point here, which is mm-hmm. one of those other like weird things that Toy Story makes you think about? Yes. We know, and the toys also know that there are, or so we think that there are more than one of each of them because they, mm-hmm. we see in what movie two with all the like tons of Buzz Lightyear. So mm-hmm. like, how do they like know when a particular toy is actually their friend, the one that they know? Like, how There's does he know that that's his Bo Peep's lamp? Probably like, there had to little be others. personality differences or mannerisms and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. when when I, I guess we already are in spo- spoilers. When they do meet back up again, when Woody meets Bo Peep, there is that like second long hesitation where it's like, is it is it my Bo Peep? Is, is that is that do i know you and, and then and then yeah it's it, it turns out to be the same one she's like oh yes but i just like i feel like this particular situation is what arises the question for me it's because a real long shot yeah because it's like how does it, it could be any bo peeps lamp is he just gonna try every one does he just have a gut feeling like i feel like four toys when another toy loved. gets lost which also gives me weird squeaky feelings in this movie that we can talk about later more <laughs> because like eh, they're toys so this is weird but like you know i feel like in the toy world it probably has to be that if you are friends with a toy who there are tons of because there are some that there maybe aren't tons of you know like the special action figures but like if you're friends with a buzz lightyear and your buzz lightyear gets lost and 10 years down the road you find buzz lightyear i feel like i i feel like once a toy gets lost or given to somebody else you have to kind of write them off because how do you know even if you do find another one it's is it going to be yours the chances are pretty low yeah 
So no, I, I, I just feel like he's I, silly for stopping. I agree with you. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's absolutely a long shot, but it is that romantic story of like maybe it's her, maybe it's the one, you mm-hmm. know. And, and lucky for 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 him, it it, it does turn yeah. out to be them. And I think also the item that Bo is from, she's from this decorative bow peep and sheep lamp, which is a very specific item. I don't imagine there's ever been as many of those as there are piggy banks and toy t-rexes and all that Probably and also true. being like such a fragile like porcelain object they're even also they're older toys out. yeah so there there's probably not as many of them out mm-hmm. in the wild yeah so i too, think it's so. i didn't think it was so much like is this the one that i remember as okay this is too good to be true i'm dreaming i'm imagining something that's just be. a pretty lamp Right? That's just a mm-hmm. nice blonde porcelain doll, right? I can't let myself believe this and get my feelings hurt. Yeah. So they jump inside the antique shop to go see if if that lamp is the one. Uh, and this is where we meet Gabby and what what was the vent- ventriloc... Benson, I think. They were like they had a couple of four of them and like they're all Benson. Yeah, just amalgamated. Was it, I at t- at times I swear I heard Venson, like V E N S O N, or however you might spell that. And to me, that almost made sense because he is a ventri- a ventriloquist doll. I, the V alliteration there, but I guess I'm wrong. I, I think know. it was Benson. Like I I watched a lot of like recaps and a, like oh, I guess he doesn't really have any lines i was gonna say who's his voice actor none <laughs> they, 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 yeah he doesn't say anything i i think i've heard everybody else say benson but yeah i did think I it think was so. vincent mm-hmm. at first yeah uh but those dolls are creepy as hell so creepy holy crap those are horrifying that's a big no it's a huge so I, no i i remember seeing the original toy story back in the day and i was scared of sid's to- toys mm-hmm. his like Im- amalgam <gasps> creatures and stuff like that like mm-hmm. th- those are kind of scary um and yeah like i i can imagine a five-year-old now being terrified like i'm i'm almost 30 years old and i'm terrified of those things like those are horribly scary i wonder because that's also such a rare thing for any child to really see in real life nowadays yeah those were a more or less common enough thing for a kid in like 50s 60s 70s to physically see around and maybe physically find like if they saw one in real life very chilling and i think that cultural horror has been passed down but now in a culture where i i don't know if i've ever seen one of those in real life before that wasn't like a comedy prop or a halloween store decoration yeah like it's like that's going to be a completely new thing to a kid these days i mean it is an antique shop and I think this is the time when you can k- kind of raise the question of who this film is for. Mm-hmm. Because I I don't feel like this is a start of a new trilogy. It's not no. that. P- 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 Pixar is a- a- always like, hey, when we make a film, we make sure it is only that one film. We don't think about sequels. We don't, you know, all of that stuff. Maybe if we have the right story, we'll do a sequel and stuff like that. So I think when they made this film, I don't think they thought of this as, hey, we're going to make a new trilogy. It's time to bring on younger uh, Mm -hmm. audiences and stuff. So I think this is still for us that would recognize that stuff. Like, oh, those are antique toys that maybe our parents had or our grandparents mm-hmm. had like we recognize them but maybe not younger yeah i think it's kids. exactly like this is a chill for the older people and i think little kids are going to be like whoa scary they're just like okay, that doll's it's, weird it's a what weird is doll. that yeah mm-hmm. they might be like a little freaked out but not like oh god mm-hmm. so i don't know about you guys but did 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 either of you ever have i forget exactly what they called i think they were i spy but it, it was these yes. like hardback yes. book. You know, you know what I'm t- what I'm talking about. Yes. These books. There was like 50 yep. pages in them, and it was a 
two-page spread of this still life of like an antique store and it was just filled with toys and knickknacks and all that stuff and it was like find three wagon wheels find yes. six marbles find four toy soldiers and you know and you just had to like look and it was almost like this where's waldo thing did did mm-hmm. yeah either no, of you? i remember Mickey that mansion was the best a- one yeah. I like th- I really got that vibe from that anti- antique store in particular. Just like, wow, th- this looks like one of those books. That's awesome. And mm-hmm. I'm sure that if you go back and watch it, like you'll find so many references oh, to yeah. other Pixar and Disney things. Yeah, like I... there were a lot that I caught and a lot that I'm sure I didn't. Yeah, I watched a lot of Easter egg videos today in preparation for this and there's countless things I'm sure. jammed into that antique shop like i think i spotted uh, on my own with my own human eyes like the dinoco sign and a couple other things throughout the movie but i, I think that was the only dinoco. thing like big enough to see in the store itself everything else they're pointing out is like well here's half of a shadow at this one angle like i it looks sort of like this thing. Yeah, yeah. If maybe I've got like crystal clear Blu-ray on a giant TV in a living room where I'm sitting just 12 feet away instead of in the back row of a theater, maybe I could do a little better. Yeah. I really liked how they worked the pizza truck in there. Yeah. I, I don't know if I, anybody else saw that. It was the one dude's tattoo that was yeah, working the the, like, the party guy shoot carnival thing. Yeah. So I it's on his like back leg. I was like, I, I it. saw it, but I couldn't focus on it. Yeah, like it was like it's too so blurry of a to tattoo that like I was like, this... wait, I I'm sure that's something. I yes. imagine it would be the pizza planet cause thing because that would be perfect for that character, mm-hmm. but I missed it. Mm-hmm. So good, good to know that 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 was the uh, the Pizza Planet truck made it in. Um. So yeah, they they go inside this uh, antique shop, and Gabby, Gabby, and Benson, uh, the the ventriloquist doll, k- k- kidnap uh, Woody and Forky, uh, and. Gabby wants Woody's voice box. Once, mm-hmm. once, once she she sees that he has the pull string thing, she goes, "Hey, I want that," uh, and that is because we come to learn that she was basically dysfunctional from the get go. She was a not really a misprint, but her her vo- voice box never worked, mm-hmm. um, and so she wants to have a new voice box of her own um blah 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 blah. what was i gonna say so they're trying to escape woody and forky are trying to escape Mm -hmm. but harmony enters the store harmony is the granddaughter of the woman that owns the antique shop and by happenstance that is how Woody gets taken out of the store. Harmony happens to notice Woody and she takes him out to the park to go play. So mm-hmm. Woody gets separated from Forky, who is still trapped in the antique store. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is where Woody is finally saved by Bo Peep. Yes, and we've already kind hero. of mentioned it. There was that moment. They're like, is this the same? Are you my Bo Peep? I don't know. And then, yes, it turns out to be the same one. So it's a super happy moment. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. What was that? It was real cute. Oh, I said I, I thought their moment was real cute, and I really like the new Bo Peep look. I think one of the ways that really illustrated for me like how long it's been since the first Toy Story and how much they've advanced is that she, yeah. the whole movie, I was like, something looks weird. Something's different. Something's wrong with Bo Peep. I was like, she looks great, but something's wrong. And then I looked back at a side-by-side picture of her in the first movie. It's like, because she doesn't look the same. Yep. Because they can do her so much better and so it was kind of weird it was so good that i spent the whole movie being like something's something's not right and it's not just that she's wearing pants or that she's got like bandages she's just like she just she looked different Mm -hmm. see it's so much it's been shinier long for me since i had seen any of the toy story films that i you know it like this just looked like a natural progression Mm -hmm. it's it's weird because you can go back and compare the films this is 
light years ahead, no, <laughs> no pun intended. I uh, was watching a video that said to now they're trying to really, really <clears throat> nail that porcelain texture and how light reflects off of it. And they found, like, she can only be lit by round lights. If you give her a light with an angle on it, it doesn't work. It looks weird. So there's round lights strategically placed because everything's lit realistically. They don't make up a light out of anywhere. It's the sun. It's all real diegetic lights in the scene. So that's why, like, they're at a carnival because it's all round light bulbs all over the place. Like, it goes Mm -hmm. that deep. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But the animation, the way they render this all out is leaps and bounds. Uh, just, mm-hmm. it's so good. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so this is, yeah, we meet Bo Peep. This is also uh, where we meet the combat Carls and <laughs> Giggle McDimples, who is this Giggle. little Polly Pocket-like <laughs> toy. Great. I have yeah, to say, super small. what am my favorite comedic beat in the entire movie is the there's three combat Carls and the one <laughs> cannot get a high, high five. five. He tries like three times and every time and everybody no just one pays attention. You. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> called attention to. This is like a background joke almost. It's not in the foreground, but oh, it's I laughed so hard. It at was that. great. It's so simple, but it's so effective. Exactly. So, go ahead. I was sorry. I'm so mad at this. Um, I was going to say my favorite comedic moment was probably any number of the ones with the new plushies, Ducky and and the bunny. Yes. I don't know the bunnies. Are they just Ducky and Bunny? Ducky and Bunny. Ducky and Bunny, yeah. But, like, you know, later they meet Buzz, and Buzz just, like, slams Ducky's foot shut in his Mm. little visor. Yeah. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Uh, But my favorite was when later on they're trying to figure out how to get something from a human without Mm -hmm. being caught and Ducky and Bunny are like all right here's this plane and it has some cool name and it involves them involves them jumping out and attacking her and Buzz (laughs) is like no and they're like okay how about this one this plane with this cool name which I now can't remember and it's a longer version of that like first Mm -hmm. they do some actual interesting stuff and then they jump (laughs) out and attack her and then the final one which I do think is called the plush rush involves like it shows the old lady going home, it's super involved. taking a bubble bath with bath. her red wine. She's in bed, and then they just emerge and move <laughs> over. And that was probably my favorite part. I was like, oh, my God, they're so committed to this. Like, they're off their fuzzy rockers. They're nuts. But, like, it was – that was probably my favorite. Yeah, that that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get a little bit of it. They were played by Key and Peele. Key and Peele. It was great. <laughs> yes. They were so good, I think. It was great. It was perfect. Uh, so was... speaking of Ducky and Bunny, this is where we c- c- catch back up with Buzz, who is uh, back at the RV. They're all starting to freak out. He's like, hey, we need to go after Woody. Uh, and so he, too, jumps out the window of the, the RV. He's listening to his inner voice, which is that the, 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 you're like... Mm-hmm. To- toys and their c- consciousness this is this is strange to me I, I i don't know if either of you felt this i felt like buzz got a real short stick in this film yeah and so, I, I that's agree. a funny it was gag. out of character for yeah buzz. it's a funny gag once or twice but i feel like they hit it too many times i'm like he's not very smart but he's like, smarter he's, than that he's almost <laughs> Just finding out that he's more than a toy. Like, he's like he's a toy that can talk. Like, he's... Mm-hmm. You figured that out in the first movie. Yeah. Where, like, and why is this a thing for you now? That was my big complaint about the movie. I was like, the one thing I don't like... And I don't, like, have a favorite Toy Story character, but I like Buzz. I was like, he's so like dumb. And my roommate Bring pointed back Star out... Command. I mm-hmm. believe at the end of the third movie, they have to reset him. Because he gets stuck in Spanish. And so they reboot him. And he's like, I wonder oh, if you're right. they're playing off that a little bit. I think it's an excuse to make Buzz look dumb again. Because they think it's funny. But I think that's the reason. Interesting. Is they had to I don't like him, that. So he... Yeah, exactly. But... I'm kind of like, it seems kind of lazy. But okay. Like, I think they're playing off of that. And being like, so he's still sort of himself. But also we reset him. So like, he's super dumb again. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Okay. I, di- I didn't think about that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but but yeah so buzz buzz j- 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 jumps out of the rv uh but he gets c- captured by this guy who's running uh one of the carnival uh one of the carnival games uh and he is put up on the wall as a to- as a to- to- toy p- prize mm-hmm. and this is where we meet ducky and bunny uh <laughs> p- played by key and peel they were fantastic uh I, I it was almost one of those things i like that walk back where woody and forky were on their way to that town i was like oh no is this gonna be annoying forky's a little <laughs> annoying right now but he ended up being fine and then when i met ducky and bunny i was under the same impression i was like i don't know i like yeah, i like them but of- they're over the top yeah, and that kind of, we have a pre-established celebrity comedy duo here playing these wacky side characters in our movie feels like not a traditional Pixar thing to do. No, not really, I, yeah. It worked out effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're charming. Uh, well, I think my mom enjoyed them very much, so they <laughs> truly play for all audiences. Speaking <laughs> of famous comedians... Uh, the other toys that were left in the closet in Bonnie's room were all older c- comedians yeah, too. Did Mel you hear Brooks, about that? Yeah, I think Carol oh, Burnett. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're talking about people who are in this movie, can we talk about my favorite new character, Duke Kaboom, <laughs> played by none other than the angel sent to Earth, Keanu Reeves? <laughs> Keanu, we are in the middle of a Keanu Reeves renaissance, and it is I great. I love it. I love that people love. I think people have always loved Keanu Reeves. I think and everybody is just now being like weird and fangirly about it, which I does love. embrace him. Is he so great? And I was kind of like, I love Duke kaboom just because he's keanu reeves and then we met duke kaboom and i was like oh my god i thought i couldn't love him more he says yes we canada like yes Yes, we canada (laughs) Canada playing softly in the background like whenever he's on screen whatever he's an inspirational moment yeah yeah Uh, i just i really loved him so the the yeah there was betty white carol burnett mel brooks uh but they're the the toys that they played were all spoofs on their names Mm -hmm. it was bitey white cheryl burnett and (laughs) melephant brooks oh yeah he was an (laughs) elephant so funny stuff um but yeah so i i i was worried about ducky and bunny um but eventually they all meet back up on the roof of the antique store, uh, which is where they're like, oh, my goodness, Buzz, Bo Peep, who are these guys? Family reunion. It's great. Uh, and then that's when they go back in the antique store and start hatching the plan to free Forky. And this is where Bo Peep is like, hey, I know the right man mm-hmm. for the job. And they go after, as you just mentioned, Duke Kaboom played by keanu reeves it's great and I, I love that little toy discotheque they have to walk yes, through that's like inside club. the pinball machine and he's back there that had my favorite easter egg in this movie which is the appearance of tin toy original hero tin toy yes i would not have understood this one i found out about this today uh, uh do you do do you want to exp- explain this because yeah, I, I i had no idea who tin toy was in college, I did a deep dive on Pixar history, and Tin Toy was among the first animated shorts that they ever produced. It's about okay. this little tin, you know, kind of, he's like a marching band, one-man band guy. He's got, like, a little drum and, like, cymbals or something like that, a little hat. And this short is about, like, he's, it was kind of a prototype for Toy Story. Like, he's taking to a new okay. house, and there's a baby that's very rough on the toys. And this is a baby from like the early nineties of computer generated imagery. (laughs) And it looks monstrous. Like, look this thing up. It's wild. And you know, he's all the other toys are like cowering under the couch and he tries to be brave and, you know, go out and try and play with the baby. And he was, that was supposed to be Pixar's first attempt at making something to really share with the public outside of like, computer graphics festivals oh, they're like hey disney we have got this character we think we could make him a little half hour christmas special that you guys could televise what do you think and disney's like y- you know what go big or go home like don't do a half hour tv special 
if you think you can do a movie, do a movie. And that's where Toy Story came I'm from. Showing them pictures of this baby. From yeah. The tend- this is <laughs> mon. This is nightmare yeah. fuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Way, way scarier than any ventriloquist dummy is the Tin Toy Baby. Check out the video version of this it. on YouTube.com. Just search for the whatnot so you guys can find this on YouTube and see this giant monstrous Tin Toy <laughs> Baby. So, uh, I think uh, I had one of my other favorite moments of the movie in the little discotheque, and this mm-hmm. will probably be the last thing I talk about before I unfortunately have to go because oh. I have to pack for a trip. But I just really wanted to talk about this because this is oh, the thing that really got me thinking is we see that in the antique store there is a cat, and we see the bottom yes. half of a plush toy. And yes. then you go to the discotheque, and there is the top half of that toy. It's a little, like, blue zebra, alive and well. And he's like, hey, Bo Peep, like, what's up? And she's like, hey, hanging in there. Like, I saw your better half. She, You know, they joke about it. Yeah. But it started this whole conversation with me and my roommates about when does a toy truly die? Yeah. And when can you, like, put them back together? Because I wholeheartedly believe, based on, you know, Bo loses part of her arm, as mm-hmm. I think a gag on Woody, and she's like, oh, no, just tape it back on. And then her hand starts working again. I truly believe if you sewed the bottom of the zebra back on his bottom would start working again his legs and so it begs the question at what point if that cat were to tear more and more and more like towards the head where's the point where it dies like where's the point where it can't come back and then my friend (laughs) said gruesome i know it's really deep for a children's movie right um and then my friend said well and then that begs the question if a toy is dead but you've got all the right parts can you bring them back to life can you put them back together and and there they are again um and i think we also say this a little bit right i'm i don't know i'm sort of on the fence i I feel like as long as it's the original material because because i mean we see in this one bonnie make a toy out of nothing that was Mm -hmm. not an actual toy yeah so Mm -hmm. i I, you, you can make stuff yeah, and we see this in the first movie when we see Sid with all his like monster toys. They're yep. still toys, and so it just restarted this whole conversation about like when is a toy truly dead? And also, the ones that are I don't stuffed, think we know. like what what is the stuffing? Does the stuffing equate like if they are just is completely that their soul? F- flat? Yeah, is like, that their like organs? Who knows? Can can you there? like de organ a, a the stuffed are, animal? These are gruesome. The only toy. <laughs> soul like living creature question that i had was whether or not toys could kiss i don't want to know <laughs> I, like, there was a moment i thought uh woody and bo peep were gonna kiss but they're like they're the the height is so that woody's nose is right at her yeah, eye line and his nose is so size. pointy that i was like oh my goodness he's gonna poke her eye out <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, this is the most romantic movie I have ever seen that does not play by remotely romance rules. Because I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they can even physically kiss each other, and if they do, that's all I, they could I, ever I, do. I don't, I don't really need them to in this film. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just not what it's about. Yeah, well, it's I nice that they're it either, together. But it was but... like, you know me, I'm a, I'm a big big absolute goob for romances and i'm like this is the point where in any other story they'd run to each other and there'd be a kiss yeah and it's playing by every single other rule and it stops there i'm just like this is wild (laughs) it's just a new (laughs) and different experience for me I also didn't want them to kiss because I feel like while, you know, kids play all sorts of games with their toys, I feel like when the adults making the movies start to sexualize the toys in the movies, even with something as innocent as kissing, I was like, "Mm, I don't feel good about this. I don't. So yeah, when they were like about to kiss, I was like, I hate this. And then they didn't. And I was like, oh, thank God. Just wait till they check back in on Andy and his girlfriend and the new toys they have. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Toy Story 5. Woody and Bo Peep somehow have kids. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah. How much time do you have left with us, uh, Jess? Because I I don't don't want to continue on if you don't have much. Do you have final stuff to say? What should we do here? 
Yeah, I unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time, and I don't want that to cut out on your guys' fun. I just, I have a plane to catch, and I have a bag only Mm -hmm. half-packed, so I don't want to go too late and then hate myself in the morning. Um, Mm -hmm. But that was really the main thing that I was, honestly, the main thing I wanted to talk about was, like, when does a toy die? Because I think that's the, the main premise and question of these Toy Story movies that I think comes up for a lot of people is like how are what's the deal with their conscious like how does this work and I really really loved how they ended it with their little tiny end credit scene Mm -hmm. where Jessie is the one who sneaks off to school with Bonnie on her first day of first grade and she's like Bonnie made a friend and they're all like oh great she made she's like no she made a friend she made another friend (laughs) and we're all like oh no fell for it again like it's a oh she developed a human relationship good and they're like no she did not not yet (laughs) but it's a it's a knife with like long blonde hair and like red lips same kind of thing that that Forky is and he's like, welcome. You know, he does this whole tiny little spiel that I can't remember. And she goes, how am I yeah. alive? He's like, and I'll, he goes, I'll help answer any of your c- 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 yeah. questions. And he goes, I don't know. And then it ends. And yep. I feel like that's the absolute perfect that, ending yeah. to the Toy Story franchise. You don't because, need like, to know any of these it's, things. It's also one of the best comedic moments, too. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, it could just like, it, it, she's she almost has this horrified look of like, how am I alive? Like, what is going on? And he just goes, I have no idea. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about this movie is that you, like some part of your brain expects from other types of movies to mythology will be explained. There will be rules that they lay out. You know, nope. the couple kisses at the end, like all kinds of like natural pieces of logic. Every other movie goes for and this like, diverts and subverts like all of them like mm, it's almost that but no no we're not doing that we're doing a different thing look at this cool different thing you're yeah. gonna be fine don't worry about it yeah uh so J- J- jess i have one last question for you then how would you rank this film would where does it stand in your ranking of the toy story films gosh i think oh man um I, God, that's such a hard question because again, like (laughs) I mentioned earlier, the Toy Story movies are movies where the sequels are actually good. And when you asked it, you know, five seconds ago, my first second response was, well, obviously the first one is the best. And then then I like the second and then I like the third and then I like the fourth, but they're all equally good. And then I was like, but if I think about it for any amount of time i'm like well there were a lot of things that i liked about the second one more than i liked the third one but i also really liked the third one but also this one was really good and Mm -hmm. so i think for me the way the toy story movies rank is toy story one is at the very top because I like this whole time I've been thinking about all the silly little lines like Buzz with his arm and Mrs. Nesbitt. And the, <laughs> you are I miss a Mrs. toy. Nesbitt. Like, the whole, it's so good. And it was the first that we saw of this world. And then I think two through four are all equally ranked for me. I can understand all, that. that. They're yeah. all good. And the only reason Toy Story 1 is above the rest is because it's the first. And you can't recreate the first of anything you can't get that like experience of of, of awe and wonder and and yeah and magic and so i i think i would have to say toy story one and all the others are in second together i think that's fair i think that's Mm -hmm. absolutely fair i was seeing a lot of people rank them today and it was a lot a lot of one two three four no four three two 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 one it was just it was it was it was it was everything and it was just like they're all just they're all basically equally good like they're, mm-hmm. they're, they they knocked it out of the park. They're all masterpieces. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, I hope you guys have fun with the rest of this. But I think yeah. now is a good time for me to to roll out, and uh, I will be eager to listen in to the second half of this and see what I missed. Okey and doke. thanks to everybody who listened to me thus far. Well, thanks for oh. joining. I I know uh, just for for down the road, we are planning on having you back on for more episodes of the yeah. Reactor Core. Hopefully, for for some of the ca- captain's logs as well. Uh, so be be looking out in the future for more. J- J- Jess, I'll be back again. Yeah, like mm-hmm. where, where can they find you on the the inter the interwebs? Yes. Yeah. So on Twitter, I am Legend of Jess with underscores in on either side of the of. So Legend underscore of 
underscore Jess. And I think on on Instagram, I'm Accio Jess Beaver. But I'm not actually positive, and it's going to take me too long to find out. But you know my Twitter, and you can find me there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for en- having me. Enjoy your, vac- your vacation. Thank yeah. you. I super will. Party hard hopefully and hopefully I can for talk us. about it on the don't, captain's log. Don't lose Forky. I, I won't <laughs> lose Forky. Absolutely not. He'll be right by my side. Sounds Bye, good. Friends. We will talk Bye. to you later on. All right. We are back. It is just me and Melissa for the rest of this one. Uh, Melissa, you you had said you had something you wanted to talk about right when we got back into the swing of things here. I want to talk about what a tense kind of Jenga puzzle, like the middle chunk of the movie is, where there's so many different parties. <laughs> there's so many different parties and so much tension with what place everybody needs to be and when like we have to get Forky back to Bonnie we have to go over here and we have to get Forky and we can't encounter Gabby and then we need to get Forky back to Bonnie and but Bonnie's parents are going to leave at any time so how do we stop Bonnie's parents from leaving and everybody yeah. has to meet each other like there's such tight timelines on everything in that middle act of the movie. Yeah. And one that's... wrong move and it can all fall yeah. apart. And that's something like Toy Story 3 had a decent amount of that. I think all of them really had this sort of, that's why I compared it to like a Jenga tower. Like, okay, very yeah. carefully. There's only one space where this thing can go. Like the timing has to be now. The place has to be now. And now we do it. That's some of their most impressive stuff, I think. There's a couple points in this movie that I think could use a little bit more finesse, like, you know, Woody's reaction after he has his voice box removed. I'd like a little bit more of that of him realizing, you know what? I I think I'm okay with this. I can live like this, and I see what this does for you. Like, a lot of it goes without saying, but I'd like... It's such a big part of the movie. I'd like just we, a little. We know him bit so more. much, and we've been with him for three movies, right? That it's yeah. just like we we want to hear more from from what he thinks. Yeah, yeah, like that's a major that sense, part yeah. of yourself to give away. How does that change you? Exactly. So there's things that I think could use like one more pass at it, but then there's things like this, like the delicate like dance that the middle act is that I know they worked so hard on. And I can see like, uh, okay. You know, it's like people trying to push around like a war models, like, all right, tanks over here, (laughs) guards over here, soldiers over here. And just like drawing maneuvers and like tightly plotting everything that can tell they put so much work into. And that's really strong stuff every time from the studio. Exactly. Uh, so let's see, where were we? We just found Duke Kaboom. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need him to make the jump ac- across the way so they can uh, get Forky out of the cabinet that is being g- guarded by the Benson d- d- dolls. Um, let's see, let's see, where am I in my notes? That's what I need to figure out here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Woody escapes. I am in the wrong spot entirely. Let's see. Farky on the roof of the antique shop in blah, blah, blah. Oh, I do want to mention that when they are doing the Duke Kaboom backstory Mm -hmm. and they are doing that commercial that he's in, the announcer in the commercial is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. (laughs) That's Donnie. We found him. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so that that was just a like when I saw that in the credits, I was like, "Wait, really?" Huh, I'm sure there's so like weird. a lot of baffling little voices throughout this so movie. Weird. Like I, there were too many of them for me to catch as they all scrolled past yeah. on the screen at the theater. Yeah. Uh, so they finally make it a, a, across the way. Woody opens the cabinet, but Gabby is there waiting because Forky has been spilling the beans on all of the mm-hmm. psychological good stuff that she needs to manipulate Woody. Um, they, uh, let's see, everyone, well, so that happens, but happen. things things go wrong. The <laughs> cat 
finally notices that all these toys are up to something. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they have this big long string. The cat j- j- jumps up. They all get stuck on the cat. Uh, and the cat is chasing Duke Kaboom around. He leads mm-hmm. them outside. Forky gets left behind again. Uh, all the two boys <laughs> escape, and Woody's sitting there like, "We need to go back, Jack. Really, we need to <laughs> go back. Go back Kate. We need to go back, Kate." Yeah. Um, and it, it's just like in Lost. They're all like, "No, dude, th- that's not. You're you're <laughs> selfish. You need you need to, you need to let go." Um, and and Woody just cannot let go, and he and Bo Peep, Peep kind of calls him out. On it and be like, hey, you're being selfish. Like, th- yeah, like th- her, this is her... not about uh, Gabby. This is not about uh, Forky. This is about you. Like, yeah, you, you feel like... like you're purposeless. Mm-hmm. And her three sheep get injured, yeah. you know, in this. Like, a uh, bunny gets injured. Like, it's a real rough, like, tight escape to get away from this real brutal cat. Yeah. They're like, okay, Woody we understand what you were doing was noble. We have to cut our losses. Like this mission isn't worth it. And I forget at what point this happens in the movie, but somebody asked Woody, like, why are you so insistent on protecting Forky? Like Bonnie loves him, but you know, he's, he's so new. Like Bonnie could love anything. She could become just as attached to anything else. They can make a new one. And this is such a tough, like what it's such a tough mission. He's trying to throw himself in the garbage. Why are you spending all your time at this? And Woody just, has a breakdown and says because this is all i have left yeah like he's it has been his purpose his entire life to it was andy his entire purpose was andy and then his purpose was okay it doesn't always have to be him it can be another kid now it's bonnie and now that bonnie is growing up and she loves woody but woody was never her number one best guy never the favorite yeah she kind of has a more equal relationship with all of her toys and now she's starting to have more favorites as she gets older and kind of leave them them hot leave them behind like leave them in the closet not take them out for playtime and it's clear that she's does not actively need him and he still acts like no i have to be here to keep everything together and they're like woody no nah, that's okay but you you can chill you you yeah. can take a rest but woody just won't let it go uh, he goes back into the store and he's finally made up his mind. He's like, you know what? I can save Forky if I finally give G- G- Gabby my voice box. Uh, so that's what he, he does. He, he says, hey, it, it just give me Forky and you can take what you want. Um, and I, I, I didn't think that. I mean, there are things that are very scary in, in this film. We mm-hmm. mentioned the, the dolls, but... Going into that whole thing of like cutting him open and pulling it out and sewing him back up yeah. and just like having it be this like surgery like thing, which is also a like horror movie mm. trope thing of just like having some surgery you don't know what's being done done to you. Yeah. Like that's a scary scene. It's it's, it's a wild. lot. Especially yeah. because this is a new concept and we we've seen that toys can get injured you know and they don't really feel anything Mm -hmm. the only damage is oh no what if somebody throws me away because i'm too broken that's one of the major points of toy story too but like how does that affect you like what does this voice box do for you besides oh i just pull the string and it entertains kids and i've got my fun sayings like what how much is that a part of your soul of your personality how are you different when it's gone and he didn't really seem different and I would have liked, I would have liked at least if he took a second and like acknowledged that himself instead yeah. of just the audience going, oh, it doesn't seem different. Yeah, it's strange, strange stuff. I want to talk about Gabby Gabby for a second. Go How for was it. she as the pseudo villain of the story for you? Um, I I I liked her a lot. I I was kind of expecting more from her though. The, like mm-hmm. more and antagonistic stuff of being like, haha, we got your voice backs, mm-hmm. your your, your, vo- 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 your voice box, but we're also not giving you Forky back. Take that, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I was expecting one more thing, um, but then, like once she gets 
the voice box, that's kind of it. She keeps her word. All right, you can have Forky back. Like, this is my big moment to shine. I only wanted what you had. Like, I, 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 I only wanted a chance to be to belong to a kid, to be loved mm-hmm. by this kid. Um, and and that that was it. Yeah. And, and, and you, you know, um, so I, yeah, I, was... I, I want to say she's maybe one of my least favorite villains of the Toy Story series, but she's still a good character. Yeah. And like that was what a lot of things I was watching and listening to pointed out that the the first movie, the real conflicts are Sid, who is maybe a villain is a big word because he is like in his uh, he doesn't know he's doing anything wrong he doesn't know toys are sentient he's not torturing them on purpose but he's definitely the antagonist it's like Buzz and Woody's own conflict that's the antagonist Mm -hmm. and two and three have got we think this is a nice guy oh no nope he's the villain he's really gonna try and trick us and this movie has a character that comes off very antagonistic at first and softens up pretty quickly yeah. like when it's um gabby and forky together you can tell she's not just using him for information they strike up a pretty sincere friendship she's very mm-hmm. open and honest with him from the start about i am defective i you know kids don't like it that i can't talk all i've wanted is to belong to a kid if my voice box is fixed i know that will fix it I need this to stop holding me back. That's why I need another voice box. Yeah. Like she's very, even ruthless is kind of a, a strong word for it almost. She's a bit controlling and manipulative to get to what her goal is. But once she's like within arm's reach of that goal, she really plays fair. Like she sticks by her word. Like if you want Forky in exchange for the, She's treated Forky well the entire time. He's not a prisoner. He's yeah. pretty much enjoying I mean, himself. He is a prisoner, <laughs> but in a like, just so she can get what she yeah, wants. Really, just in She's the tactical in sense. There. Forky's having a grand old time. They sincerely like each other. I've known and Woody she... my whole life. It's been three <laughs> whole days. <laughs> and she upholds her part of the bargain. Yeah. And then she is really on everybody else's side and i thought that was nice i also like that it's not just oh we revealed this backstory to the audience and the characters kind of have that in the back of their minds like with Lotso, like you know oh the characters have got that in the back of their minds like oh you haven't had such an easy life bud but that is still the enemy for them the audience is far more sympathetic to Lotso than the characters are on this i kind of like that we are all on the same page like Mm -hmm. We learn Gabby's backstory and everybody else kind of comes to the same conclusion that we do. Okay, you've had it rough. We have an opportunity to help. We're going to take it. We can work together on this. What you ultimately want is something all of us want. It's noble. It's achievable. Let's see if we can get you there. Exactly. So I don't think she's very effective as a villain, but I don't think that was the point of her. Yeah, I I, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, she just wants to t- take her opportunity to shine, and right now in the film, this is her chance. She has mm-hmm. the new voice box, and she wants to go and imp- impress Harmony, who once mm. again is the daughter of the or the gr- the granddaughter of the woman who owns the antique shop. Um, and she does her thing. She pulls the the, the string. She catches Harmony's at- attention. And the mom is like, oh, you found a new doll. If you want to take it back with us, you can. And Harmony goes, nah, it's fine. And she <laughs> just like, oh, that was neat. I'm tosses done. her away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so Gabby is heartbroken. And yeah. like, the, this is the thing. Like, yeah, she's not really a villain at this point. Yeah, if point of the she film, was a you, more, like, you really feel for her. And if she was a more traditional villain, then she would have a turn here. She would exactly. be rageful. She would turn back on Woody. She would demand something else to make her more lovable. And instead, it, it is a very sad turn. Yeah. Like she's really lost a lot of her spark because she's had her eyes set on that's got to be my girl, and she doesn't get her. Yeah. Um. So, let's see, Woody t- tries to get Gabby to come back 
with him to Bonnie. That's mm-hmm. the plan. Huddy's heart go, 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 goes out to, to, to her, and he's like, hey, you, like that one may not have worked out, but I have a good human. Like mm-hmm. I, you can come back with us. You like she'll she'll love you. She loves all of her toys basically equally. You know, uh, but you have you have more than one chance now. Like it's not like all right. Well, you used my voice box. You should give it back now. It's like no, you still have this. You're you, you know, no one's gonna take it back. You can still use it. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the way. Gabby sees a lost child in the amusement park, oh. uh, and and she was like, "Hey, this might actually be my chance." Yeah, that was one of the most tear jerking parts of the entire movie mm-hmm. to me, just because the shot of that kid, like she's standing all alone in this little patch of shadows, like at the edge of a snack cart or something, yeah, sobbing. she's way back in the corner. She's scared. She's hunched over. She's and like crying. The, like, you know, she's under all these carnival lights and the lighting's not like fun. It's like this kind of sickly, sad yellow color. And it's such a desolate image. Yeah. Like that hit me. Like, it's just so sad looking. And like, my mom noticed me crying a lot. And she's like, did you remember a time when you got lost when you were a kid? And I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't need my own real life pain. That barely counts. It's the art. It's the art of the thing. It's Pixar, yeah. mom. It's nothing yeah. that happened to actually me, the human. It's the pixels, god damn it. <laughs> it's the pixels, mom. <laughs> oh, and just it did. And just the knowledge that it's not just this kid needs me. It's like, I need the kid. The kid will take care of me the same way uh, I take care of her. Like, I just think about my own niece and her, her toys are baby dolls. She doesn't have exactly one. She doesn't have a Woody of her baby dolls. That's her number one. But she has a selection of them that she rotates out. And she takes such good care of those baby dolls. They get their fat, you know, they eat. They get their diapers changed. They get stories. They go to bed, they get tucked in, wow. they get songs, they get rides in the stroller. Like she does everything. Like that's her job. She's like, I'm, I am taking care of these baby dolls. Yeah. Like you will help me take care of them too. And just having that like real world experience. Like I saw her do this the day before I went to this movie and I'm like, Gabby's right. That little girl is absolutely going to take care of her. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I did forget to m- m- mention that Forkly, but Orky uh, finally escapes in Bonnie's backpack oh, yes, back yes. at the finally antique get shop. That connected. Uh, we they yeah they they spot Bonnie's backpack. They realize she left it. So Forky goes and hides in the backpack as uh, Bonnie eventually comes back and picks it up. Um, and. Forky goes back. I think that's when they go back with Buzz and all, all of them. Yeah. And they um, they leave without Woody and all of that stuff. And, and they um, – or is that, is that right? Let's see. Forky escapes in Bonnie's backpack and tells the rest of the toys to meet Woody at the carousel. Mm-hmm. Because that's where Woody that, is that's thinking. That's what I have in my notes here. We can direct Bonnie to there. I can bring Gabby over there. We can get everything matched up. Yeah. I think the most stressful part of this entire movie is what happens to Bonnie's dad. Because he, because I know, I can imagine, like, okay, we're on this road trip. We have these sites to see. We're supposed to be these places. And Let's like, send dad to jail. <laughs> that is... Spend- that is also one of the funniest things. They're like, all right, how are we going to get them to turn the RV around and go meet at the carousel? They're like, let's send them to jail. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how do we get dad to stay in town for the day? And Buttercup the unicorn's like, I think dad should go to jail. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it's it. Like they, it's just they spend all morning looking for Forky. And then there's they, you know, Jesse punctures the tire with a nail. Like now the RV is stuck here and they fix the RV and they're driving away. And then the toys like pretend they're the GPS. And then when they stop, and then when the parents stop listening to the GPS, like then they start manipulating the brake, like stop, just stop the RV. Yeah. Like what a nightmare for dad. He just wants to get back on the road. I know what dad's like. They like to get moving and keep to the schedule. (laughs) Exactly. Like Um, it is the worst day of that poor man's (laughs) life. 
<laughs> it's awful. But yeah, so that's all happening. Those toys are on their way back to the carousel so they can meet Woody and Bo Peep and Gabby. That's when Gabby sees the girl who needs her help. Uh, they set Gabby up to go help the girl. And it, it's exactly that. It's happily ever after. The girl mm -hmm. takes her. She finds her parents. Uh, and she loves the doll. She's like, look, this is my new friend, Gabby. You know? And yeah. the parents don't question it. They don't okay. think, oh, here's some grubby doll that we found on the floor at a public carnival that it you'll sleep like with and historic yeah. and pristine like yeah. there's no way that is a doll you want at that carnival that Who is knows, a mint condition doll from like 1956 it, they're it like okay. is one of those times it's like okay she just had a traumatic experience whatever you need though so yep. i it's somewhat understandable um but yeah so uh then they need to make one more jump. So here comes Duke Kaboom again to save the day. Uh, they they need to make this jump to get to the extraction point. And uh, he finally does make the jump. He makes this mm -hmm. big stunt jump. And uh, I was surprised there was no j joke or line in there about falling with style when they when oh, all of the like yeah. you're the best at crashing and then yeah. what he should have said something to Bo Peep like, you mean falling with style and like no yeah. crashing what a, what a missed opportunity there. it really is oh. um but yeah so they they make it to the extraction point uh, and they they meet back up with all the rest of the toys. The rest of the toys finally get to see Bo Peep. And they're like, "Oh my goodness, Bo Peep is here!" And it's this it's this heartfelt reunion, all of yeah. this stuff. But they kind of understand that she's not gonna be coming back with them. Mm -hmm. um, and Woody is not sure what to do. He doesn't really want to leave Bo Peep because that's the woman. The toy that he loves uh love of his life yep. yeah it's the love of his life in whatever form it takes but he also wants to go back with the toys and be with buzz and be with bonnie and with forky and all the, the, the hat stuff and he uh says his goodbye to bo peep and then he walks up to buzz who's <laughs> who says hey she's gonna be okay and at first you kind of think it's about bo peep but then he 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 clarifies he says bonnie is gonna be okay mm -hmm. and at that that that's one of the more emotional m m moments where he's where you realize that woody's not gonna be coming home with them he's he's gonna be staying with bo peep he's gonna be on his own adventure and right off into the sunset with yeah. with, the, with the girl and I like that's that that's how the movie ends. You nailed it exactly. Right off into the sunset. I like that the, they they added this extra they movie. Give this them whole a good movie is there ending. for that. Yeah. Like if the first Toy Story movie is about what if toys were alive? And the second one is about what if toys were alive and felt a lot of deep, serious pain and trauma? And the third movie is like, what if toys were alive and could face their own death? And this fourth movie kind of takes a more philosophical sense to it it's more like okay if toys are alive any living purpose? person any living person needs to be more than their job woody is so like job goal purpose focused yeah that somebody has to sit him down and say what do you want to do like not just what do you think is best for everybody what do you think is responsible like, what does your heart tell you instead of what your conscience tells you? Exactly. I think for me, the the him saying goodbye to Buzz was maybe the most emotional yeah. moment in the film for me. Because, yeah, it is. It's another ending. It's it's this. We've seen them from day one together. They were best buds. They were left and right. Yeah, 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 you know. And... It's this like I'm never gonna see you again no. kind of goodbye. Ugh. Like it it was a once in a lifetime opportunity that they just happened to meet Bo Peep. What are the odds that they're gonna be back at that time? Like almost none, right? Um, or that something's gonna happen. All their stuffing is gonna fall out, or you know, who knows what. 
Um, they'll get buried alive in the sandbox at the thing. They'll get stomped on, you know, who knows? Um, and yeah, it's just, it, it, it's still, it's still one of those things. I, I don't know if this movie was necessarily needed Mm -hmm. per se, but I think it, it, it works as a good ending for Woody. And I think seeing this moment made it worth it. Yes, it's it's so warm, it's so satisfying, and I've heard people say that they wish there was a little bit more Buzz and Woody together in this movie, and yeah, I'd like again, that I think too. Buzz got the yeah. short end of the stick, and he just wasn't Buzz. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Maybe we could see a series of shorts where he's a, a little bit more in the spotlight and really well utilized. But I like that how they Big end. Star their- Command. Buzz Lightyear Star Command. <laughs> Disney Plus. Come on. <laughs> that would be great. I, yeah. I like more, that their story buzz. wraps up with a display of how much they really know each other and can read each other. Like Buzz is like, I know what you're thinking. I know what you want. Go, go off with Bo. Bonnie's good. We've got her. And then the very end where it's like all the toys looking out the window at the RV to like, you know, there's Woody and Bo like diminishing this little dot in the mm-hmm. in the background in the horizon. And Buzz just says to infinity. And then it cuts to Woody and it says and beyond and beyond like, like he knew like, OK, I know he just did this bit. And now it is my I will do the other half. I will see the, the second half. Ha <laughs> <laughs> You're doing that in It's character. not even that they both <laughs> said it. It's just that, like, I'll say the first half, and you say the second half. <laughs> They're not even there. They can't hear or see each other, but they know that's how it goes. It's, it's funny. It's really funny to me. It's yep. really sweet. Like, it's ridiculous, but it's so sweet. Yeah. And that is how the movie ends <laughs> with the words to infinity and beyond. Uh, however, there are a couple post credit scenes yeah. we already kind of mentioned them uh the one when i did you catch the name of the knife looking toy or if they said a name was it knifey was it miss forky i don't like, i don't I, think she got a name no she made not a, well because they they do the thing where it's like hey she made a friend but then do they introduce her as something i don't remember or does she just pop, pop up out of the bag i don't remember so I would I, guess maybe I. not then. Um, and I couldn't find a name in like the IMDb page that I was like, I think it's that one. But um, yeah, so they, they meet the knife thing and she was like, why am I alive? And they're like, I have no idea. And mm-hmm. it's pretty funny. But then there is one more and c- 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 credit scene. And I think this one is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this was after all of the credits. You see the Disney ca- castle once more. Then you see the Pixar logo once more, 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 more. And instead of the lamp, what's his name? You Luxo Jr. When Luxo Jr. comes in, it's not him. It is Duke Kaboom. And he's posing on his motorcycle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. And he j- jumps on the the eye and it's the same thing and when he finally squishes the eye that's when uh the com- the commander carl who's been waiting for his high five oh comes in and he- he's like high five yeah and he finally gives him a high five and it is great i don't i didn't stay that long i think once i saw the disney castle i'm like okay time to go because i you like just my mom missed it then like my mom had already left i'm like okay time to go catch up with mom I stayed because I wanted to You'll see the- You'll have to look the, um, it up on YouTube. I'll spot it sometime. I'm so glad because I was looking for that. Like, is there going to be a final post credit sequence where that combat Carl gets his high five? I, I he does. I <laughs> miss it by 30 dang seconds. Oh, man. I wasn't expecting it to be af- like in the logo at the end of yeah. like the title card at the end of the movie. Yep. Okay. They're getting tricky with us about this. I did really like the in memorial card for Don Rickles- that yeah, says that we are nice. eter- Yeah, I like that it says we are eternally grateful, which is what the aliens say to Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's nice. I uh I think I heard that the his lines in this film yeah. were 
both like it was, it was like a mix of unused lines mm-hmm. in previous films and stuff from video games that he yeah video games voiced. like theme park attractions yeah. like all kinds of stuff so they they mix mashed all of his 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 stuff there which is which is nice good mm-hmm. stuff yeah uh did did you have any other easter eggs that you wanted to p- p- point out um uh, a pretty obvious one is uh just after Woody and Bo reunite there in the park and then the three sheep are bringing her little odds and ends that she might be able to use in her like, you know, toy repair kit, like the little makeshift kit she's got in the back of her skunk mobile, which was also very cool. We didn't talk about the remote control skunk Skunk mobile. Mm -hmm. They bring her uh, the grape soda bottle cap from up. Okay. Yeah, I didn't recognize that. I just, I, it was just like, oh, there's a bottle cap. See, no, that's the that's a little grape why, soda cap from up. This is why I texted you. I was like, I am relying on you for the Easter I eggs because I'm not going to know any obvious. of these. Obvious. I thought that was one like everybody I knew. <laughs> I saw up once. It's great, but yeah, I don't like no. most Pixar films. I I don't go back and watch them again. So I noticed that, but I didn't weird. notice. Like I didn't put it together. So the sheep bring her the bottle cap and then like they also bring her a safety pin and that's mm-hmm. what it's made out of. The bottle cap is like a pin that Ellie puts uh, on okay. Carl's shirt and up and like I didn't put it together like, oh, that's the complete set. I thought it was just <laughs> a safety pin. I didn't really think about go. it. Y'all so already that... mentioned the Pizza Planet tattoo yeah. on uh, the Another dude. Another call back to up. There's a dogs playing poker kind of painting in the background of the antique store. Would make sense. And you can see this in the background of the movie poster. And when I'm sitting there, when I'm waiting in the lobby of the movie theater for my mom to show up, I'm next to like a giant cardboard poster and I'm looking at it. And I can see in the background, there's a dogs playing poster, a dogs playing a poker. Dogs playing poster. <laughs> Just Whoa, hanging up posters. A poster of dogs playing posters of dogs playing posters of... <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. We've gone too deep. <laughs> but it's the dogs playing poker and there's a man sitting at the table with them. And I'm like, who is that? Why is this? This is something. Why is Gamora? This means something. And then the Easter eggs had to spell it out for me. That's Charles Munson and his dogs from Up. Like, oh, okay, yeah. it's them. It's those dogs specifically. And that's who the man was. It's the, that's why I, I couldn't figure out dogs. why he looked so familiar. It's the Up dogs, Melissa. I'm not playing this game, Kyle. I am an Come adult. on, damn it. I'm a professional. <laughs> the most interesting <laughs> Easter egg in this entire thing. Uh-huh. The car that comes at the very beginning of the movie of like one of Andy's mom's friends who's there to take the Bo Peep lamp away. I was looking at the license plate. Was it yeah. something with that? Yes, yes. It says um, RMRF97. What is that? Okay. This is This is a very obscure one. So, have you heard the legend of the time? <laughs> have you heard the legend of the time when Pixar almost deleted Toy Story 2? No. <laughs> okay. All right. I believe I told you once that P- Toy Story 2 was originally determined to be a straight to video feature that like a yeah, you know, some sub team somewhere was working on and then you know the Lion King one and a half. Yeah, like thing. the Pixar executive team looked at it and like, no, we really want to do this right. Give it to us. We know it already give us one extra year. Sure. Yeah. We can turn this around. This is not good enough up to our standards where it is now. We'll remake the whole thing. We will give you a theatrical release. Just give us the time. And so it was the most hectic production. It was this headlong, terrible crunch of a rush for so long to get that thing turned around like they thought they could. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody who was trying to delete old files from a server or something like that. And RMRF was like the Linux code or whatever it was for delete all. Whoever this person was was thinking like, oh, I'm just deleting this folder. I'm just cleaning up trash files to make more space. I don't think they realize like how interconnected everything the, was. Yeah. No, you That's are nuking wild. 
you're nuking the network. Files are being deleted, like, out from underneath people. And there's this giant rush to, like, save everything. Like, run down there and unplug like, the machine. Cancel it, yeah. Make yeah, sure yeah, everything like, is saved. Calling the IT team and screaming. An absolute disaster. That's wild. In, like, an hour or something, like, 80% of what they had done for that movie had disappeared. But there was one woman... <sighs> There was one like lead animator who was on maternity leave and she had a copy of the movie on her home computer. <laughs> and I'm a little perplexed about how that works since they've got servers and servers full of the stuff at the head office and she just has a copy on her computer. I don't know how civilian technology was able to do that, but way to go this lady. So they go well, to her I house. Mean, the internet may not have been what it was yeah. back then. So yeah, just like, hey, here's a copy of the stuff. Everything you need to work on when you get back, you can push yeah. all of your stuff onto our server. Yeah, yeah. So she's got a copy of almost everything like from the time she left maternity leave. So it's like we're missing the last two or three weeks of the movie but everything else is there. It's on her computer at home. So they drive to her house. They take her computer and they wrap it up so tight. They cover it in bubble wrap and blankets. Like the somebody rides in the back of the car it's with the it. the Ark like, of the Covenant. It. Exactly. <laughs> like they carry it into the Pixar building like one step at a time like they're going through a china shop. Because they're sitting the there like there is breaks. no in signs of intelligent life anywhere with you guys <laughs> god damn erasing files and <laughs> like if that computer broke they would have had to start over toy story 2 another time we we wouldn't i'm i <laughs> honestly feel like they would have just stopped like let's just move yeah. on to something else yep so and that was in 1997 getting ready for its 1999 release so rmrf yeah, the, 97 the internet was not a thing back then yeah yeah that is why yeah, that yeah license plate of the car that kind of okay almost wrecks woody's life <laughs> i i always license plates are always a good way to hide easter eggs in oh in, yeah in stuff. so i all over the place yeah i i saw it i was like okay that just looks like a normal license plate to me i you know mm -hmm. no thank you for sharing that yeah there is an easter egg that i heard i did not catch it mm -hmm. but i heard that a pa i don't know if it, it was on I don't think it was on the keys that uh, they needed to get to unlock the cabinet, but apparently uh, there was a keyblade I, from K okay. Kingdom Hearts in there. So I, I've heard. I don't I, know if this I, is true. I watched a video that had a screenshot of it, and it's like, doesn't this key okay, that she yes. uses to unlock the curio cabinet kind of look like a keyblade? And I... Well, the, the keyblades really? are meant to look like old, like an <laughs> antique-style yeah. keys, so maybe it's a stretch. But I also that's saw, what like, I heard. So a lot of people saying, "Oh, look! When Duke Kaboom flies on his motorcycle and the moon's in the background, that's an homage to ET." I like. I felt that too. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you can just have a person riding a vehicle on the moon in the background and call that that's ET. That like, scene is so iconic, act, though. Exactly. Like you have to match it so closely. You can't just be like. Nerm through the sky and like that's it we've done et like have you ever seen a halloween decoration where a witch is on a broom in front of the moon like that's not et like it's, you can't but call that's anything like, that has you're right that's not ET. But there's a certain trajectory and like I, yeah I don't know, like it wasn't it, like, the trajectory I, it wasn't the angle it wasn't the like right was. proportions or I silhouette it, there's not a, I I don't think you have a case here. There's not enough there. Melissa, I know what I saw. God damn it. Uh um yeah, side note, we just did mm -hmm. an episode of the review show on Titan 8 8 E and I was yeah. noticing this in some of the uh like art and p posters. There's a number of p posters where he has a gun in it and he's shooting off his beam and then every so often i see one it's the exact same thing except he does he not a have a gun talking. no he he just has his hand uh, open and it's like it's it's the map thing that's mm -hmm. on, on his hand and i was i was making the thumbnail for that and i was like huh i wonder why that is reminds me of et <laughs> yeah <laughs> take the take the gun out it's a solid choice yeah um 
any other notable Easter eggs, or should we just go on to final thoughts the, and, and those stuff? Those were the big ones I found. Everything okay. else was like, this sign has this logo on it. Like, there's that antique shop is so dense. Like, you could spend half an hour going down, like, so many YouTube videos and reading sure, so yeah. many lists and everything. And a lot of it's like, that's they just reuse the model. They just took that car from cars and made it small and put it put it on the shelf. Like those were some of the the highlights I gave you. Like I don't think anything's yeah. as cool as RMRF ninety seven. Yeah. So the last thing that I kind of want to mention that mm-hmm. I I was kind of surprised by. Um. So the 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 story of this film, John Lasseter is attached as usual, but Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see Rashida Jones's name on there. Yeah, she did an earlier pass of the screenplay that was even more than it is now, I think, focused on Woody and Bo. It was a little bit more rom-com-y, yeah. I, I just, like... I I know she she makes documentaries and she does screen writing and acting and stuff like that. I just did not expect her name to be on that. Just like mm-hmm. I didn't expect Flea to be the announcer of the Duke <laughs> Kaboom commercial. It was just like, oh, huh, that's strange, but sure. People Good show up all over the place. Joss yeah. Whedon helped write the first Toy Story. Oh, Melissa, you, you can't just like... Pull this stuff out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, like back before. I had no idea. Yeah, like that was when Pixar was like kind of still establishing themselves as like storytellers. Like we're going to make yeah. a film when huh. they were a lot okay. more. They were coming from such a technical, like visually artistic background. Like I think they had some outside screenwriters kind of help them with the first Toy Story script. And one of them was Joss Whedon. There you go. And yep. I, I, I do also want to mention, I believe this is the directorial debut of Josh Cooley. Yes. Uh, he was, I think, also one of the writers on uh, Inside Out. Mm-hmm. Or let's see what he did exactly. I'm opening up his uh, blah, blah, blah. And the little thing just says working on inside out and directing the short film blah 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 so what did he so he was a storyboard artist on on the incredibles cars ratatouille up uh cars 2 and then he wrote the screenplay of inside out he was also the voice of jangles the clown oh inside out uh he got a special thanks on the good dinosaur and then he directed and helped out with this story on Toy Story 4. So he is moving his way up there in yeah. Pixar. Yeah, get, get a new generation. There you go. Josh Cooley. Good for him. I think this was a good film. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. It was a, a nice time at the theater with my mom. I went by myself. Because <laughs> I'm a, alone and I have no friends. Did you get any <laughs> Spider-Man popcorn? No, I got a a giant tub of Coca Cola and a thing of bunch of crunch, and I was very mm-hmm. disappointed because the candy they gave me was stale. Ah, that was the worst, and it's so well, expensive. That... It's like five bucks for a little tiny box of candy. Well, the Spider Man popcorn <sighs> is hot and fresh. What what is Spider Man popcorn? Do they it's... make it red and blue? Yeah, it's just basically caramel corn. That's dyed like really intense red and blue. Ooh. Yeah, we don't have that. Ah, get get to an AMC. I got this at an AMC. My theater is. We don't have reserved seats. The theaters are old and broken, and they like this, we de- like. This is an old one too. If mine can do it, yours can do it. Who knows? Request one day, Spider-Man hopefully. popcorn from your local theater owner or I want popcorn of Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I have to die it myself. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I wholeheartedly recommend this film. Yeah. I think it was fantastic. I still stand by that. I don't think it was necessary, but they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, what I, a fun, yeah. nice treat. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I think that is about it. I, I think we will be doing another episode on uh, Spider-Man Far From Home coming up yeah. in the next week or two. I think that c- comes out July 4th weekend-ish. Uh, I somewhere think around there. 
it was actually it's like in the pushed next, up. Like, it's pushed up a couple days to the second, so it's like a weird Tuesday release. Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Cool. Oh, yeah. Then I, I guess they're getting out of the way of the 4th of July. I feel like they would still put it out on 4th of July because everyone's going to be off. Then it's a hot, like, go, go watch a movie and show off some fireworks. Like, that. oh, well, uh, it'll be out there mm-hmm. anyways. But, um, yes, we will, our next episode should be on Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, our previous episode was on Good Omen. So if you mm-hmm. watched the Amazon original show on that you guys can go check that out uh the whatnots.com is our website you can get more information about this show or any of the uh, other podcast uh, or any of the other podcasts that we do uh we have the review show which is basically our weekly book club style show uh and this coming week we are covering some transformers comics called the record yeah. saga actually i need more to talk, stuff about toys i need to t- t- talk to you about something with that off the air here in a sec okay um, and then uh we also have the captain's log which is our weekly off topic show where we talk about all sorts of shenanigans life love robots technology who knows what uh, all all sorts of good 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 fun there. So check out all of that stuff. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at wilkywit. That's W I L K Y W I T. And I am at Yo Kyle Springer on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you guys can follow us on Twitter at the Whatnots if you guys want updates with this show or any of the other ones that we do. If you like what we do, patreon.com slash the Whatnots is where you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you guys will get episodes early. Uh, you guys will get access to the live streams of the review show we have exclusive c- content all all sorts of stuff so go check out our website go check out patreon.com slash the whatnots if you want to support us and we will be we will be <laughs> back with another episode in a short amount of time that being said let's wrap this up and get out of here adios ladies and gentlemen this has been episode 12 of the reactor core good night Hey, thank you so much for checking out that episode of the Whatnots Reactor Core. We hope you liked it. We hope you enjoyed Toy Story 4 as well. Uh, go let us know what your favorite part was down in the comments below. That would be super awesome. Uh, you guys can also go subscribe to our channel right up there uh, and watch one of our other videos right down here because we do a whole bunch of different podcasts uh, and that would help us out a lot. Thank you so much. We love you. Bye.